Let's bring in our legal panel, Leo Terrell, civil rights attorney and host of the Leo Terrell podcast and attorney Brian Claypool. Gentlemen, uh, welcome. Good to have you here today. Uh, we knew that this cross-examination you, would get very interesting. Um, and we has watched this man once again. We have a defendant taking the stand in his own defense, telling his side of the story. Um, this is an interesting exchange as the prosecution makes the argument that Travis McMichael had plenty of opportunities to, to end this, to de-escalate this, to get Get out of this situation. Watch this. Three times he's demonstrated to you that he does not want to talk to you, correct? Yes. He's also demonstrated he's no threat to you. He hasn't pulled out a gun. That's correct. He hasn't said one word to you. He has not. He's not threatened you in any way, verbally or physically. No, ma'am. Two hours later. Yeah, um, Brian, Leo touches on something very interesting here um, because in the initial stages after this killing, uh, Mr. McMichael did not have to make that statement to the police right away. Uh, they told him, you know, you can have an attorney uh, by your side um, and we're going to get this statement, you know, one way or the other. But he said he wanted to share with them right away what had happened when they took him uh, into custody or when he was he was with them when he started to tell them this story. But then yesterday when he testified on his own behalf, he amended a lot of what he said in that original statement. So now he's got two different statements out there that this prosecution can use to, you know, to drive light through in terms of two different takes. Listen, listen to this part. This is the most traumatic event that I have ever been through in my life. Trying to go through and trying to be as as factual and detail, as, as detailed as, as I could, and then look at this transcript and being scattered as it was, I could tell that obviously I failed attempting to try as best I could. Crime. Martha, one of the biggest reasons why you don't put a defendant on the stand in a criminal trial is the risk of an inconsistency mm -hmm. that the defendant has given to, to investigators. And that's exactly what happened here. So in closing argument, the prosecutor is going to get up and say, you can't believe anything that right. McMichael's told you. He can't even get it straight. He told investigators one thing. He's telling you another thing. It's all scattered everywhere. So that's, that's going to impeach. It's called impeachment evidence on McMichael. But I think the most colossal piece of evidence that came from McMichael is how casually he said, hey, yeah, I see this guy walking on the street. I think I saw him 11 days prior, but no, I didn't see him commit any crime. And no, I didn't think he committed a crime, but I was going to chase after him anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's clearly a lack of probable cause to even chase after Ahmad Arbery. Yeah, it's fascinating uh, to see the parallels and the differences of these two cases that we're watching unfold. The Rittenhouse case, obviously, the other one, um, both men claiming that they acted in self-defense, that they were worried for their lives. And uh, the jury is deliberating the Rittenhouse case right now. We're going to talk about that in just a few moments. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Stick around. Uh, they'll be back with us in a couple of moments.